hope you're having a great day. Today I want to talk about energy. How do we build energy? What heals us? Energy. What destroys us? Energy. What makes us feel good? Positive energy. What makes us feel horrible? Negative energy. We all know everything's energy. Matter, energy. We don't need to go into the depth of that. All we need to understand is the truth about energy. Right now I can say something that will change your energy. The positive, negative, angry, sad. You can walk into a room filled with positive people and you just feel the energy. You feel good even if you don't know anyone. You can walk into a room which is very negative. You don't know anyone, but you can feel the energy. We create energy all the time. You can smile at a stranger. The stranger smiles back. There's a shift of energy between the two of y'all. It feels good. You can feel negative vibes. What is that? What is vibes? Energy. When you say I'm vibing with someone, energy, good energy, bad energy. That's what heals us. We need energy to heal to recover, to prevent. We think we should just be dependent on allopathic drugs or Ayurveda or homeopathy or nutrition. No, you're only scratching the surface. <clears throat> Every cell in the body, trillions of cells in the human body, over a hundred billion cells in the brain require energy. Where does this energy come from? The food that we eat, we recharge our batteries when we sleep at night, What's the most important thing? A lot of people come to us with chronic fatigue syndrome. Hey Luke, I'm tired. We check their reports. Everything is good. And then when you find out where are they leaking energy? Chronic stress, negative thoughts, anger. When you display anger, there's a lot of energy that you deplete. Even if you choose to suppress anger, there's a lot of energy that you deplete. And all of these lead to diseases as well. But the point is, how do we create this energy? The kind of energy I'm talking about today is the energy that we can start conserving. We can conserve that energy to prevent, to help with our recovery, to help with our healing, to help with us just having enough of energy to get through the day, spend time with our loved ones, play with your kids, go to the gym. The energy that we save when we stop resisting. That's what our topic is today, resistance. A lot of people keep talking about stress all the time, anxiety all the time. You go for different seminars, you do different classes, you spend a lot of money on stress management workshops. I don't have a problem with that, but here's another side where you have to look at changing your perception. What really is stress? And what stress is bad and what stress is good? Because there's good stress and then there's terrible stress. Most people are not stressed out. Most people are either resisting a person, a thing, or an event. And it is in that resistance that you find anxiety, fear, insecurity, low esteem, chronic stress, negativity, bitterness, and it goes on and on. What are you resisting? The more resistance you have, the more chronic stress you have. The more resistance you have, the more anger you have. The more resistance you have, the more envy you have. You're jealous of someone, okay? At least be truthful to yourself. Yes, I am jealous. Acceptance, it dissipates. Now with acceptance, you can move to action, to tame the jealousy and envy. But no, you wanna put on that whole profile to yourself, lie to yourself that, oh, I never get jealous, I never get angry, I never get lustful. What are you doing? You're resisting emotions that exist in you. That becomes a burden. Most people are resisting people. Your suffering is found in your resistance. You're resisting the laws of nature. You're trying to be in control. You can't win. In that resistance, you built up frustration. Your resistance lies in your thought process. I can change anyone. I can change my partner. I can change my kid. I can change my boss. I can change my employees. No, you have no control over that. But your constant resistance because the ego drives you, brings us suffering. Right now, you know what you're resisting. Right now, if you have suffering in your life, what are you resisting? And there may, there may be valid reasons for your suffering as well. You may have met with an accident. You may have an abusive partner. There could be other reasons. But still, what are you resisting? You see a lot of people from around the world every day talk to us about their cancers. They come join our programs and all of that stuff. And I'll tell you one thing. They can have the best doctors in the world, the best nutrition in the world, the best yoga in the world, the best kriyas in the world. But if, if they have not reached a point of acceptance of their disease and they're still resisting it, nothing can work. Their suffering increases. 
Let's break this down. Let's break this down. Person A, hypothetical, gets diagnosed with cancer. Now, when the doctor tells you you've been diagnosed with cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular, you need to go for a bypass, no matter what, that, that is information. You hear that information. Now your mind perceives that information along with fear. That's what happens with everyone. You hear good news, you first have to hear it as information. Hey, you got a promotion. Hey, your business is doing well. Now how your mind perceives it will result in how you feel. So even someone get a pessimist given good news will still perceive it and find 10 things wrong with it and that's why they can't feel happy. So our suffering is and are the stories that we tell ourselves about the information that we get. You put on the news right now, okay, and you read something about aspartame is causing cancer and it's in all of your drinks. It's information. The story you tell yourself about this information will determine your suffering. You hear your friends talking about what's happening in society, what's going on, people are cheating on one another, this is happening, that's happening, kids are doing drugs. It's information. It's how you perceive that information. Some people listen and they dissect it. Your story doesn't have to be my story. I'll listen, I'll learn, but I'm not gonna suffer because of that. I'm not gonna be suffering because of all the gossip I hear all the time, the trash I see on social media, the crap you see in most cheap entertainment and TV serials. That's information, but you're perceiving it in a way that causes you suffering. Resistance is unnatural. The more you resist, the more disharmony you have within you. You're always in turmoil, chaotic turmoil in the mind and the heart and the body when you're resisting. Now, let's talk about something. A very, very simple example, okay? You have a car at the bottom of a hill and I ask you to push this car up. The engine of the car isn't starting. Now, it's gonna be a very difficult task because you're pushing a car against gravity. The car is heavy and the law of nature, the law of gravity, okay, is real, you know that. It's gonna be difficult. You get five people, you'll push up the car. But you say, oh, I can do it alone, I can do it alone. Your ego, all of that, you'll suffer. You will suffer, maybe you'll do it, but the process will be with suffering. If I get five people in, I will be able to do it without suffering. Think of all the little things in life that you constantly resist. Constantly, mainly because of the ego, because the ego wants you to be right. The ego supports you. How dare this person cuts in front of me on the road? How can I get sick? I looked after myself, I did pranayama, I ate organic food, how can I get sick? It's all the ego that drives us into resistance, but hey, we wish you didn't get sick. But right now it's happened. Your only way, the only way forward is acceptance. You can go through anger, you can go through denial, but at some point you gotta stop resisting it. And okay, I got it. What's the next best thing I can do? What's my action plan? Because you can never make an action plan or have an action plan when you're stuck in resistance. You can't, because you're resisting. You're resisting. One person wants to push up the car, okay? You can't be thinking of an action plan because you're struggling against gravity. Five people join you, there's no requirement of an action plan. You push it up. You've accepted, I need five people to help me. This is where people who are perfectionists fail. They wanna be in control of every outcome. They wanna justify. They wanna justify everything to be a perfectionist. But the underlying, underlying trait of a perfectionist, it's not a bad trait is the fact that they wanna be in control of everything. You're constantly resisting the fact that nothing has to be in control. Things can go wrong, but you're resisting that fact. You want it your way. But the truth is, it doesn't have to be your way. Nothing always goes our way in life, otherwise we would be happy people, right? Everyone would be happy. Nothing has to go our way, and when it goes our way, we can be grateful. So now, you need to understand today out of all the patients that we see every month, 85% of them are stuck or more in resistance. And it's only when we can coach them out of resistance into acceptance, will even the most simplest plan or medicine work for them. Because in resistance, the body is in stress. Constantly, the sympathetic nervous system, you're living in it. That's why you create chronic 
issues, chronic illness, chronic suffering, chronic pain, not accepting it. Acceptance doesn't make you a doormat. It doesn't make you a doormat. If you need to communicate to break resistance, you got to do it. You got to also face what comes with it. We spoke about emotional avoidance many times. Let me take you to nature right now. There's a king cobra passing you. You get in the king cobra's way. You provoke it. It's going to kill you. You step out of its way. Don't create any resistance for the cobra. A king cobra will never bite you. Look at young animals. You go next to a little dog, uh, 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 a dog who's given birth. The mum, even with the best intentions, you go to put food, she's going to growl to protect her pups. This is protection. This is not resistance. It's protection. And as human beings today, we've lost that power. We become so emotionally soft that we give in to everything. No, sometimes you got to protect your children, protect yourself, protect other people. Sometimes that's why we have emotions of anger, emotions of physical, when we need to protect someone. If you're walking down the road and you see a young girl being molested, what are you going to do? Are you going to turn the other side, not look away, say that, oh, violence is not allowed? Or are you going to be driven by an instinct to stop that, even if it means violence, even if it means hitting someone. But you see, our minds are so filled with softness. We become so soft that we don't understand the difference between being a doormat and protection. Animals will protect their kids, their little babies. They will protect them. But we say, oh, but we're not animals. Yeah, I mean, sometimes humans are worse than animals because of the deceit, the evil that we conjure in our minds and it comes out in the most evil ways. It would be better to just slap that person out of your sight who's attacking your kid or doing something wrong and move on. That's how it is. But the point is resistance. We keep resisting and we keep building our suffering. Your homework today is very simple. Take a piece of paper, write down health, relationships, family, personal growth, work slash business. Okay. And in each of these, what am I resisting? Who am I resisting? Wherever you're suffering in any of these verticals, one, two, or all of them, well, as you write down, you will find out. The question to ask, what am I resisting over here? Who am I resisting over here? Because of my ego or pride. And right there, you will have a paper of truth that gives you the first step towards your action plan. I keep resisting this quality in my partner. That's where my suffering is. My partner may be perfect with 10 things. This one little thing, let it go. Let it go if it's not causing you harm. Don't be a doormat, but let it go. You want perfection because your ego wants that. Are you perfect? Are you perfect? The same perfection that you demand of other people in your relationships, with your children. Are you perfect, number one? You are not perfect. No one is perfect. No spiritual leader is perfect. No one is perfect. The people who pretend to be perfect are the dangerous ones. The people who accept their flaws, their imperfections, tame them so they don't become victims to it, are the perfect people because there is no perfection in the world. There is no perfection in nature. So stop building those dreams and those fantasies in your head because that builds a false expectation for you. And when things don't happen because they're not going to happen, it was a false expectation, you crumble. Oh, I need a therapist. I need a pill. I need all of that stuff. I don't have a problem with pills and therapy, but a lot of people are on it for the wrong reasons today because they're weak. I don't mean weak in a derogatory or disrespectful way. They're not empowered to take responsibility because someone say, hey, yeah, yeah, come, 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 I'll help you with this. Instead of empowering them with tools to take responsibility and make the change, they're just keeping them in endless therapy, rehearsing the negatives over and over again. That doesn't work. So that's your homework today. You will find that wherever you're suffering in life right now, there is some resistance. And that is why the word flow is beautiful. When you start the flow, when you start the flow with life, doesn't mean you're a doormat. You are understood that. I've explained it clearly to you. In your flow, things get better. When you're constantly living out of your ego and pride, your resistance is always going to be there. Always going to be there. Your resistance to death is your biggest suffering. Your biggest fear of death is your resistance to it. You know what's going to happen. What makes you so special that you think it's not going to happen? Rather, live a full life. Your resistance to dying and all this longevity? No, age gracefully. What's wrong with that? 
What's wrong with that? People promising you you're going to live to 140 years old and all of that crap. Understand. Understand what's in front of you. Have the ability to age gracefully. These are the things I need to do. Sleep well, eat well, move, have great relationships, build connections. These are the simple fundamentals. Wherever you create resistance in your life, you will have suffering, negative emotions, disharmony. With disharmony, you're out of homeostasis. Out of homeostasis, your cells are not in harmony. You're vulnerable to any disease and it is impossible to recover and heal. This is the simple truth of life. And that is why today I spoke about energy. A lot of energy is lost in resistance. That one person pulling up, pushing up the car, unnecessary to deplete so much of energy. Get five people in. The energy is dissipated amongst five people right now and the car goes up without resistance and everyone's happy. Sometimes we ask for help. What stops us from asking help for help? Ego. Pride, I can do it on my own, I don't need anyone. Also, that ego and pride is not always your fault. It's happened because of your childhood, parenting, the social circles you keep, the content you consume. But it is our responsibility to challenge those limiting mindsets, to challenge all of these things. You see, these are the truths of life. You're resisting, you're resisting your weight, but you're not doing anything to change it. You're stuck in resistance. All of these things are real. That's your homework. Write down everything that you're resisting. You will find your suffering over there. At the side, what actions do I now have to take to stop resisting? Sometimes you've got to show humility. Sometimes humbleness. Sometimes no. You still walk on with that ego the right way to drive certain things the right way. But that action plan is going to be a solution to most problems. Whether it has, it's a physical disease, mental, emotional. You're just feeling low all the time because you're resisting, 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 resisting. Imagine you're living in a country where you constantly, I'm not talking about India, I'm just talking about living in a country where you constantly resist your government. You constantly resist systems. Okay, all of that. There's one solution. Don't live in that country. Move to a different country. But constantly resisting is creating your suffering. And that's why you can see all the people resisting create more suffering communities of suffering, which now trickle down into societies and everywhere else. Suffering comes over there. I'm not saying you got to accept it, but there's a lot that you can also accept that's going well. The simple thing is, if you're not happy, change your country. If you're not happy, change your relationship, change your job. But we don't want to do this. Oh, but look, it's so difficult. Yes, it is difficult. Who said it's supposed to be easy? You're resisting, but you don't want to change. You're resisting, but you don't want to go through discomfort. And that is where the suffering is. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.